Hello and welcome to the May edition of Meeting with the Manager. In this month's edition, I'll be welcoming our Finance Director, Sandra Crawford, who has joined me to my left. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you for having me. And as always, I'll be speaking with our Public Safety Director, Steve Cooper, who will be speaking about current events and happenings around the Public Safety Department in the City of Oak Park. Before I do that, I would like to discuss a few items with you, starting with um, the May 20th budget update and formal presentation that I provided to City Council. That budget represents the continuing stabilization of the City of Oak Park. We're a city that have, we've gone through our druthers. We've gone through some difficult times like many cities around the nation and certainly cities here in metropolitan Detroit. The good news is that we are a city on the mend and we're a city beginning to stabilize, grow, and prosper. Stabilize means that because of your vote last fall on the public safety millage, we were able to offset continuing losses related to taxable value decreases in our commercial and residential sectors. In addition to that, we can use those funds to balance against future losses. We don't project future losses in this area, but if we do have them, we will have funds set aside to counter them. Grow because we've installed an economic development function at City Hall. This function will allow us to build and attract businesses from all over the globe here to the city of Oak Park. Prosper means that we're going to continue to stabilize and provide a more efficient customer service friendly city government. That process will never stop and will continue forward forever. And I know that Director Crawford will be speaking about some of the things we're doing in terms of payments of, of uh, taxes and so forth here in a moment. Director Crawford, first I'd like to start with the budget process. Um, this is a process that is mostly driven by state statute, but a process that has a lot of points at which the public can provide their own input. What is the budget process and what does it entail? The budget process can basically be broken down into two integral parts, one being an internal, internal portion and another one being the public portion. The internal portion basically consists of around mid-February, um, we submit to the department heads a request for their estimated expenditures and any type of personal cost changes that they may have for the next fiscal year. Then with that, the departments fill out their request for expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year, any department um, personnel changes that they may have. We in finance receive that information, prepare that information and submit it to you, the city manager's department. Then with that, you the city manager's department sets up, then goes into the public portion, which the public portion consists of scheduling budget sessions with the city council and presenting it to them, having the work study sessions with the department heads, and then make sure we, by our charter, post the uh, notice, public notice hearings and things like that. So basically that's it in a nutshell in a layman's term of the budget sure. process. Sure, and, I, and I, one of the key things that you mentioned that I know it's been Quite a process, and it always is, but this is a process that uh, our uh, taxpayers and our viewers should know begins in February yes. and ends in May, yes. <laughs> mid to late May. Yes. Very substantial process. Yes. One of the key things that I know um, city council members, and especially me, are interested in seeing in the budget is a healthy fund balance. Yes. And I think fund balance is one of those things that not a lot of people understand or know why it exists or um, why we'd have a policy set up for that. So could you talk about um, the fund balance, what it is, and then where do we stand in next year's budget sure. with fund balance? The fund balance pretty much, if, if I can use a term, is considered our rainy day fund. And basically that's just a safeguard for us, the city, that if anything should go wrong or we incur any expenses outside of the adopted budget that we have, we have the funds freed up, or funds available, I should say, to do so, to cover those costs, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. um, it is important to have a healthy fund balance, just, again, for the nature of having those things. Now, our policy is to have at least 8% of our expenditures and about 10% of our revenues. Now, are we there today? No, we're not. 
Um, but will we be getting there? Most certainly we will. Okay. Right now, we're currently for this fiscal year that's coming up, which is the 2013-14 fiscal year, we're approximately 8% of our revenues and about 8.4% of our expenditures. So we have some growing to do, um, but this is things that I believe, even despite the economy, we will be able to meet those challenges, that goal in the coming years, fiscal years. Yeah, and I certainly agree. And, and I wanted to, at this moment, I wanted to point out that the, you know, when I spoke earlier about the continuing uh, finding of efficiencies yes. throughout City Hall, I mean, one of the things that while we may budget for an 8% rainy day fund, mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of cost savings and things that'll come into play prior to the end of next fiscal year, which would be June 30, 2014. Um, that will, I hope, drive our fund balance even higher so that um, if there are unforeseen circumstances, we can accommodate them. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. Now, the, the other big thing, the other big message in the budget, as I spoke about in my opening remarks, is Public Act 345 and the vote that uh, took place last November, November of 2012. So could you talk about first, um, Public Act 345, I think, is that referring to the state statute that allows us to go out and do this, but could you talk about what that is and then what that vote did for the city in terms of its its revenue. Right. What that act is, is that it allows a municipality or city to establish a retirement system strictly for public safety employees. And so what that did in terms for us, the city of Oak Park, it allowed us to establish a new retirement system specifically for our public safety officers, but also the taxpayers have committed their monies to help support this operation for us. So what it did, what it allowed was that expenditures that the city would have had to pay out of their general fund is now being transferred over to the retirement system, sure. which will be uh, helped, if you will, by the, the taxes collected and then any transfers in that the city may need to help fund for the uh, public safety retirement, which consists of benefit payments, health care, sure. all of which, Pension you know, yeah, yeah, our legacy costs that we have. Right. So um, thank you, citizens. <laughs> yes. And once again, thank you, citizens. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to point out a couple of things just to piggyback on the things that you were saying. Um, this has, I mean, these are costs that we would, we have to pay for no matter what happens. I mean, Absolutely. These, are, these aren't costs, these aren't additional costs, these aren't, um, you know, extra fluffy things. These are Absolutely. legacy costs that the city over the course of the last you know, umpteen years yes. has had to pay for and, and uh, will carry forward. Um, and much appreciation again goes to yes. our residents who stepped up and said, we would like to provide an offset to that cost yes. so that the city can um, take on some of these continuing declines. I mean, Absolutely. let's be honest. I mean, it's, it, and I think there's always this, this sort of uh, misunderstanding of market values of properties and taxable values of properties. Yes. And um, even recently, I, I saw an article saying that uh, the average home price has gone up 40% in the metropolitan Detroit area, which may be true, right. um, but taxable values are is a much different story. And yes. being that government is a reflective, reactive entity, we won't see those gains for, for some time. Absolutely. Um, but the good news is we are on the upward trajectory. Absolutely. Um, we hope in, you know, even in the 2014-2015 budget to be able to zero out some of these losses yes. and continue to build up our rainy day fund, yes. focusing on city services and improving city services. Yes. Um, and you have a very large part in all of that. <laughs> but, yes, I do. So a lot of people don't realize all of the departments that are made up of the finance department yes. and all of the functions that you, you know, you manage. So could you talk a little bit about those functions and what they're comprised of and then just a little bit about some of the personnel things and other things going on within those departments? Sure. The accounting division is one of the divisions of the finance department that I oversee and that consists of our payroll department and our accounts payable department and also our senior financial analysts that we have just hired uh, here to start at May 1st to mm -hmm. be exact, which is uh, a welcome event for us because due to the budget cuts, um, the city did go through some layoffs. And so there were positions that were eliminated and not filled, but uh, thanks to the council and uh, they approved in this uh, budget for an, a senior financial analyst to come up on board, which will help that division of the accounting um, yeah out tremendously, but we're looking at streamlining the payroll function as far as any possible shared services that maybe we can look into with neighboring with other communities and or also the most important thing is getting new software yes. <laughs> to being more efficient in 21st century for our residents and our employees 
in that respect as well. I also oversee the assessing division, which is comp compromised of, or made up of, I should say, of uh, our assessor and our uh, senior appraiser. Yes. And um, even though it's a two-person department, they still do all the gambit of everything that a full city does anyway, and they do it well, and I thank them for their services for that as well. And let me, let me interject mm -hmm. right here. I know that, you know, being a city manager in another city, for me, that in an out, when the assessor's and appraiser role was outsourced to the county, um, I have a special recognition for the fact that we have those folks here locally, mm -hmm. and um, the ability to be versatile is, and answer resident questions and provide real-time input for our residents is just an absolute necessity yes. and so key yes. for your operations. It is, it is. And again, like I say, I thank them very much for their, their time and their talents that they yeah. give to the city. The other division that I have, or another division I should say that I have, is the Treasury Unit, which most pr people who don't have their mortgage paying their tax bills are familiar with. Yeah. And so with that uh, division, we want to also become 21st century as far as making it more efficient for payments for the residents. Um, right now, well, with Treasury, we've always had where you could pay online with a credit card. Um, you can always come to the window and pay with cash or check, money order. And um, But now what we're looking into doing is making those, again, more efficient, streamlining them, and allowing people to pay at the window with a credit card. Sure. And that ties me into my next division, which I'm also over, which is the water division. Mm -hmm. And right now, we've just added maybe about three months or so, I think it's been, uh, where you can pay online with a credit card for your water payments. Now, there are certain circumstances where you can't do that, but you know those that's not the typical scenario. But for the most part, what we're trying to do is streamline that as well and making that, not only can you do it online, but when you come to the window, because right now, for both divisions, we don't have the capability of receiving credit card payments at the window, which, right. I don't like turning away anybody <laughs> right, right. when they want to pay because they took the time out of their day exactly. to come, whether yeah. if it's on the lunch hour or whatever, and you know, just to come and make that extra step to come into us. And we want to be as efficient as possible with them. And then also we have my the finance department, which is compromised of, uh, or I should say, made up of myself and Karen um, Bryant, which is my assistant. Mm -hmm. And so we oversee um, the budget process, the CAFR project process and any other little things that come in yeah. to play uh, major changes that we do uh, for the finance division so um, we're a lean mean running machine and um, a lot of times like I say we do have some public input with the uh, water and things like that but a lot of times we do behind the scene oh, things yeah. we're not always out on front where people see unless they come to the city and like I say you know I the percentage of the people that do that probably are not representative of the 30 something odd thousand people that we have, but yeah. for the ones we do see, we want them to have um, a welcoming experience and also an efficient experience Absolutely. in coming in and you know taking time out of their day to pay their bills or what have you. Yeah, and I, I wanna just, again, underscore that point, and it's it's a great point that you make, that the, the idea is that, I mean, setting up credit card payments on site here at the city yes. or even uh, online, the idea is to make payment of bills for our residents as if, uh, easy and customer service friendly as possible. Yes. Um, we, we don't expect you to waste half a day right. here at City Hall. We expect <laughs> you, you know, you, you have your own uh, jobs and things mm -hmm. that you're, you're trying to accomplish. The other thing I think, you know, technology and software, mm -hmm. this is an absolutely critical uh, necessity for the yes. city, as we said, that this, and this corresponds directly with being more efficient and more customer service friendly. Um, Sometimes it's a matter of uh, working smarter yes. rather than working harder. And yes. I think that's what we need to focus on in the new fiscal year. And the new fiscal year is upon us. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank me you. too. <laughs> now I'd like to spend some time with my regular guest, Director of Public Safety, Steve Cooper. Welcome, Director Cooper. Thank you, sir. Before um, we go into some more things, I'd like to start out asking you about public safety's move into the new City Hall Public Safety Building. And that move is happening right now. So could you talk a little bit about what that move is made up of and some of the things that you're working on to get it done? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, we're very excited about the, uh, the new building. And as you said, we are in the process of uh, moving as we speak. 
Um, now, our total operation is not going to move. Um, how it affects the public, they'll still come to the current location and make their police reports, or if they need to pick up reports at our records department, we'll still be operational out of the uh, existing facility that we are operating out of now. The administrative offices, our detective bureau, and our fire inspector, along with our fire marshal, our community resource officer, uh, we will be moving into the, to the new building. Now the reason that we're moving uh, ahead of the rest of the department is that they have to finish constructing the, uh, the remainder of our cell block area. So until that's constructed, uh, they will remain at the facility along with our property clerk. And we're anticipating probably sometime in August the, the entire staff will be moved into the new location. Uh, like I said, it'll be pretty seamless for our residents. They won't notice any difference except some of the personnel will be operating out of one biz, uh, building and uh, the remainder will be in the other building. It may take us a little longer to navigate from one building to, to, a, to another, but uh, mm -hmm. like I said, it, it's a welcome uh, minor uh, adjustment. And so I just want to say a couple of things and reiterate something you said, that first, it may surprise some people that um, we are already moving personnel over into the new building. I think a lot of people don't realize how fast that project is coming along. And then second, just to reiterate something you said, that people can expect no change in their public safety services. So when they call 911 or they have a question and they make a phone call or uh, arrive in person, really nothing is different for them. It's completely seamless, as you said. Right, the, the same numbers that they call, they'll continue to call uh, my personal extension as well as uh, my deputy director and the rest of the staff. Those numbers are exactly the same. And uh, like you said, it'll be seamless, there won't be any delays in, in dispatch uh, runs, uh, there's no delays as far as receiving reports, everything will, will, will function uh, you know, seamless. Sure. And just last thing, so we've, we're entering the summer months, you know, school gets out sometime in June, um, across the board typically. What kinds of things can we expect as just, you know, I know there's a lot of just the normal seasonal things that go on out there, but what kind of uh, trends and things are you seeing and can we expect? Right. One of the, uh, I guess, the more prominent complaints that we're receiving from some of our residents is with the warmer weather, the kids are getting out there, being a little more active, and the basketball hoops are making their way into the street, which we have an ordinance that prohibits, uh, you know, playing basketball or any other types of sports in the in the streets, and and that's for uh, number one for safety issues. Right. We don't want uh, we want the kids to have fun this summer, but we don't want them out chasing a ball, running in front of a car, uh, or interfering with traffic. Um, so we're asking that the parents, you know, pay special attention, make sure that the uh, hoops stay actually on their property and not in the street, uh, you know, as to disturb the travel of, uh, of our other residents and the, uh, the other people who use our, our roadways. Sure. Um, another one that yeah, we're kind of hearing because, like I said, the summertime's here, it's warming up, the windows are going up, and now the music, yeah, people want to yeah. tend to turn up the music a little louder, and we're asking that our residents be respectful of their neighbors, uh, we don't expect them to, you know, to, to be, uh, you know, uh, totally silent in their homes, but um, just, just, like I said, use good common sense and be respectful as it, as it relates to, um, you know, they're playing their music. Uh, with the summertime here as well, you know, we, we beef up our, our, uh, our patrol efforts down our residential streets. We want to stop the speeding motorists uh, and slow them down uh, for, for safety reasons as well. Like I said, those are the three main ones that you, that you run into uh, when you have the shift in the weather. The kids will be out of school here uh, very soon. So, you know, like I said, we, we're just asking for our voluntary cooperation from, from all of our, our, our residents. Sure. And then just briefly, one last thing. I wanted to just, in the, you know, we've, this uh, month's edition, this month's show, I should say, is all about the budget. And one of the things that we've budgeted for in the Public Safety Department's budget is um, a couple of new police vehicles and uh, fire gear. That um, so, could you speak a little bit about you know both of those items, why they're necessary, and what kinds of things citizens can expect as a result of those things? Sure. Now, our fire gear we call it fire turnout gear, and, and uh, our residents that they have the unfortunate uh, circumstance to have us come to their home for a fire run. It's that we call them bunker pants and the, and the actual bunker jacket with, you know, helmets and the gloves and, and uh, all of the trimmings. Now, the NFPA, which is the National Fire Protection Association, basically rates the equipment, and they give it a 10-year life expectancy. 
and the equipment that we're currently with now is, is uh, right at that 10 year mark. So we uh, had to replace that equipment and we want to keep, you know, keep the best equipment on our, our firefighters for, for obvious reasons. Uh, the other thing that, that you spoke about as far as this budget year is the, the vehicles. That's a constant uh, yeah. situation where you have to constantly you know, purchase vehicles because you're using those vehicles in emergency response mm -hmm. and uh, they have to perform when, when called upon. One of the challenges that we're facing is with the, the ever you know, decreasing size of the, the, the full size sedans, uh, they currently don't meet our, our needs in public safety. So we're shifting now, some of our residents will see a shift to the SUV style vehicles. Yeah. One that we will have, uh, that we're rolling out within uh, probably the next week or so will be uh, it's the Ford Interceptor SUV. Mm -hmm. It's kind of made on the Ford Explorer body frame. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason that uh, um, we need the larger vehicles is because of the, the equipment that we're mandated to carry. We carry uh, stretchers uh, by virtue of being police, fire, and EMS. There's just a, a plethora of equipment that we have to uh, have in those vehicles, and that includes you have to have stretchers, <coughs> you have to have backboards, you have to have uh, medical first aid kits, you have to have automatic defibrillators. Uh, we carry our fire gear in that trunk. Um, and then there's all the other components, fire extinguishers, flares, and uh, like I said, it's just, it goes on and on. And uh, it's basically you're trying to stuff 10 pounds of potatoes into a five pound sack. So now we're, uh, with the new budget here, once that's approved, we'll be uh, transitioning over into uh, a couple of the Chevy Tahoes, yeah. which is going to definitely uh, help the needs here in public safety. So we're, we're excited about that and uh, very appreciative. Yeah, and, I, and, and you know, obviously one of my top priorities for the city, as always, is public safety. And my commitment has been to do as much as we could in this coming fiscal year, but in future fiscal years, we will look to uh, begin hiring back staff that we were, that we laid off last year, unfortunately, due to the budget cuts and we'll continue that process. We want to make sure that we have the very best public safety department uh, in this city and that we keep our great response times and uh, keep our citizens safe. So appreciate all that you do. Absolutely. We uh, appreciate the support and appreciate the support of our uh, residents. Thank you, sir. See you next month. <laughs> next month, I will be hosting our mayor pro tem our city council president, Angela Diggs Jackson. She will be my guest in the June show, and we will be talking about some of the things throughout the course of her tenure here that she's experienced and some of the things as a resident that she sees. Um, so look for that show coming up in June. In addition, I wanted to just sign off with a few reminders. First, as our director of public safety said, with the warmer weather brings a whole bunch of different things, but one thing that it definitely brings here in the city of Oak Park and virtually everywhere across uh, metropolitan Detroit is the issue of rats. I would ask all of the residents throughout the city to be cognizant of garbage storage throughout the city in your own garbage containers at your household. Make sure that they're tightly contained, um, that garbage is not exposed. And if you do see issues, um, please report them to our Department of Technical and Planning Services as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching this month's show of Meeting with the Manager, and I look forward to seeing you next month.